Bye. In this episode, we're discussing auto ducking versus side chaining. So I'm actually going to be using the project from Witted Game Audio Episode 2, where I discuss dynamic dialogue and narration. Most of this I won't use, but I am going to utilize my sequence narration sequence container. If you want to know more about what this project was, I'll link you to that episode, but I'll also link you to some documentation on how to quickly make a sequence container in case you want to jump into using auto-ducking and side-chaining alongside this episode. So the whole point of this episode is for our music to duck down its volume whenever a narration is playing. So I'm going to quickly add in my music. First, I'll add in a music playlist container to the interactive music hierarchy and name it Eel's End. Then, I'm going to import an audio file into the music playlist container. Now, I'm going to hit F10 to go into the interactive music layout. Go into the music playlist container and drag the Eel's End music segment into the playlist editor. Leave it as sequence continuous and set the loop count to infinite by hitting the down arrow once. Now, we're going to head over to the master mixer hierarchy and add three buses underneath the master audio bus, music bus, SFX bus AD, and SFX bus SC, AD standing for auto duck and SC standing for side chaining. Something that should be noted is that these buses must be under the master audio bus, Otherwise, you will not have access to the auto duck tab. You will also not find the auto duck tab on the master audio bus itself. Now add the S of X bus AD to our narration sequence container. You don't have to add the bus to all of the audio files in the container. They'll simply look up to their parent container and use the bus that they are using. Now add the music bus to the Eels N music playlist container. All right. Go back to our SFX bus AD and head into the auto ducking tab. Hit the insert button and find the music bus. Change the volume to negative 18. This will tell the music bus how much to duck its volume when the SFX bus is used. Then change both the fade in and fade out to 0.3. Now let's head over to the event tab. We already have our narration SC event to play our narration sequence container. So we need to make an event to play our music. Make an event, name it Play Music, and drag in our music playlist container. Now we're going to hit F8 to go into our music layout. This is how we're going to test our music and our narration simultaneously. Hit the down right arrow on the top left of the Soundcaster session to make a new Soundcaster session. Name it whatever you like, then we're going to add in our narration SC and play music events. We'll play our music, then we'll play a few of our narration events. may have noticed that there is a large delay at the end of each narration before the music comes back in. That's because in my original audio files, I left in a long tail at the end of my narration. For our purposes, that's fine for now, but you can experiment between having a lot or a little bit of blank empty space. Great, you've now finished auto-ducking. Let's switch over to side-chaining. Hit F5 to go back to our default designer layout, and go back to our narration sequence container. Change the bus to SFX bus SC so we'll no longer have our auto ducking. 
head over to Game Sinks and make a new game parameter. I'm going to call mine Side Chaining. Change the minimum to negative 48, the maximum to zero, and the default to negative 48. Now go back to the audio tab and head to our SFX side chaining bus. Go into the effects tab, scroll down to wise meter, and make a default custom wise meter. On the right side of our wise meter, hit the three dots to go to the edit menu. First, I'm going to change the attack to point one. This will ensure that our music goes down quickly when our narration is playing. Then we'll change the hold to point four and the release to point one. For right now, these are just experimental numbers and you'll likely want to fumble with them later to get the result that you want. Now we're going down to the output game parameter and setting it to the side chaining parameter that we just made. That's it for the wise meter for now, but I'm going to keep it open since I want to edit these values later. Now we're going to head to our music bus, then to the RTPC tab. Hit the double right arrow and select voice volume, which refers to the volume of our music. On the far left side, move the point to zero, then on the far right side, move the point all the way down to the bottom. Now double click anywhere on the line and place it on zero on the Y axis and anywhere you feel is appropriate on the X axis. Now it's time to test it. Will this sound as good as when we were using auto ducking? Hit F8 so we can go back to our soundcaster, start the music, then play our narration. Did you hear it? Let's play it again. Oh, good. Listen, I need you to do something very, very important for me. Some of you may notice that the music is constantly shifting up and down, unlike when we were using auto ducking and the music would stay down until the narration was complete. Basically, the music will hear the narration pause for a brief moment, then it'll go straight back up during the dead space before going down again when the narration picks up again. This is because our attack and release values are very low. Let's see if it'll help if I raise my release value. Hit F5 and go over to the wise meter again. I'm going to change the release to 2. And now I'm going to try again. In front of you are these little obstacles that I need you to overcome. That sounds better, but still not quite as clean as our auto ducking. That's because side chaining is better when working with the environment. If you want your player to hear the sounds of yelling and fighting in a big epic battle, then side chaining would be super useful. In dense areas of battle, the music would dip down a lot in order for you to hear the fighting. Then in areas where things are a little calmer, the side chaining will allow you to hear more of the battle music. So let's switch back to auto ducking. Change the narration sequence containers bus to our auto ducking bus. Then go to our music bus and remove the RTPC that we just added. Now everything is back to how it was. Hit F7 to go to the sound bank layout, add the play music event to our main sound bank, and generate the sound bank. Now let's briefly jump over to Unity. This part is extremely brief because we already have our narration set up from episode 2, but I'll go over a brief overview of what you'll need to do to get this working. In the default wise global object, I have it set up to start our sound bank. In the first person character, I have an AK audio listener set up. And finally, I have a narrator object which has a narration script placed on it. I go into detail in episode 2 about how to make this script, but I'll put the script in the Google Doc if you simply want to plug and play. Now here's the one single edit that we have to make in order to demonstrate our auto ducking. On the first person character, simply place an AK event that starts on awake and plays the play music event. That's it! Let's test it! Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, good. Listen, I need you to do something very, very important for me. In front of you are these little obstacles that I need you to overcome. I just need you to jump over the hurdle, go under the archway, go to the green path, not the red one, that would be bad. If you could do that for me, that would greatly help us over here in corporate. Over and out. Seriously, this was important to us. You failed. We never.
never come back. That sounds pretty good. And you may have heard the failing mission statement at the end of the demonstration. That gives you an idea of how the narration sounds with the auto-ducking and without the auto-ducking.